this Sunday, our flashback, which takes you back to March 1997. The Hartford Whalers broke hearts when they announced they were leaving Connecticut. We have this clip from our archives featuring a very pregnant Denise DiCenzo. The long battle to save the Hartford Whalers and Major League Sports in Connecticut is over tonight. As today, the Whalers announced officially that they will move at the end of this season after rejecting the state's offer to build a new arena. Now, we have team coverage tonight. First Channel 3's Dennis House is joining us with how an end of an era came to be. Yes. This has been in the works for a long time. The long-term future of the Whalers has been in doubt for years, and in recent weeks, fans, merchants, and others who simply enjoy living in a place with the prestige that a pro team brings were hoping something could be worked out to keep the team here. But by midday, their hopes were dashed. It was official. Connecticut's only Major League Sports team is leaving. Is this a setback for the, for the city of Hartford? Of course it is. Governor Rowland delivered the bad news that the Whalers would not accept the state's final offer. That offer was to build a $147.5 million state-of-the-art arena downtown. But the Whalers wanted more. Number one, the Whalers would not agree to a long-term lease. Rent-free, $147 million facility, pay all the costs for the next three years, and no surcharges or taxes on tickets or suites. In addition to that, they wanted uh, the suites, the luxury suites, to all have been sold and committed to by May 1st, and that season tickets would reach 13000 uh, by May 1st. The governor said it was impossible. Whalers owner Peter Carmano said it was necessary to offset $45 million in losses the team would suffer while waiting for the arena to be built and said there was only one way to save the whale. Well, if the state of Connecticut uh, uh, was willing to spend taxpayer money to uh, subsidize the team, uh, yeah, of course we could have stayed. But the governor said the deal was the best the state could offer. Carmano said to accept it would have been a, quote, reckless business decision for a team that has lost money every year he's owned it. To our loyal fans and to the corporate community who worked so very hard on this, we want to say how deeply sorry we are that things are working out this way. We wish it could be otherwise. But some are wondering if Carmanos, who lives in Michigan, was ever sincere when he said he wanted the team to stay in Hartford. Every time the, the state responded uh, to the to the Whalers, uh, the bar went up and the bar went up. And it just seemed like he did not have any intentions. As I read through that stuff today, it just got uh, more ridiculous. Now, the Whalers did have one more year left on their agreement with the state, but both sides agreed the team can leave at the end of this season for a payment to the state of about $20.5 million. Dennis, is there any chance whatsoever, the tiniest of chances, that the Whalers could end up staying? Seems very slim. Carmanos did say if either the state or business leaders came up with a way to get that $45 million, he would consider it. And someone said if uh, he was offered the money that he put into the Whalers so far to sell the team, he said he would. Although later he said selling is not an option, so it doesn't look good. All right. Thank you. If you want the Whalers to return, I'm told we need a billionaire to come forward and just say, I want to own a team. So if there's a billionaire out there watching today, you know what your job is. <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. Thanks for watching, everybody. CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Polly is next.